In this tutorial, I briefly want to go over Deep Packet Inspection or DPI and the Traffic Analysis feature on the Ubiquiti Edge Max device. So let's get started. For this demonstration, I'm using an Edge Router X configured with the basic setup wizard. So it's sitting at 181.1.1. Both of my machines, PC1 and PC2, I'll plug it into the Edge Router on the LAN side. One is sitting at .10 and the other at .20. So I'm going to watch some videos on YouTube and Vimeo. And I'm going to see on the edge router which of these hosts originated which type of traffic. So that is what deep packet inspection is all about. The edge router will basically look at the contents of the packets and see where it is headed and which host originated it. So you can see that PC1, for example, looked at videos on youtube.com and PC2 looked on video, vimeo.com. So this data is actually stored on the edge router itself. We cannot export this to a network monitoring station, for example. If you want to do that, then you want to implement something like SNMP. You cannot do that with the traffic analysis feature. It is only locally present on the edge router. And this data is purged after 30 minutes of host inactivity. So let's see PC1 uh, went offline. Whoever was using it plugged out his computer, turned it off. Then after 30 minutes, the data will actually be purged. However, if the PC come back, comes back online within those 30 minutes, the data is basically kept. So if you are watching out for what exactly these hosts are doing on your network, you ha basically have to constantly be looking at this screen. Otherwise, you might actually miss something so that it's not stored long term unless the computers are always online and always connecting to the Internet. So it only supports offloaded traffic on models any other than the Edge Router X. And the Edge Router X actually does some trickery in the background where it also supports deep packet inspection for non-offloaded traffic. So if you are using an Edge Router and you notice that traffic is not showing up in your graphs, it might be because it is not being offloaded. So there's a verification command. I have it in the bottom right here, show UBNT offload. You have to use the command line for that you can see which type of traffic is actually being offloaded. And that is the type of traffic that we will actually see on the edge router. Like I said, for the edge router X, it works a little bit differently. There are two ways to configure this feature. We have the host only mode and the enable mode or the on mode. With the host only mode, we actually do not use deep packet inspection. It's just basically bandwidth monitoring where it shows the host and the amount of traffic that they generate. With the enable mode, we are using deep packet inspection and we can actually see which host and the specific application that is responsible for the traffic. So I think I've talked enough. Let's get started on the configuration. As you can see, I've already connected to my Edge Router X. So let's enable the traffic analysis feature. In order to do this, of course, we need to go to the traffic analysis tab. And in here on the top right corner, it is a little bit hidden. We have the status to be either disabled host only and enabled. So in order to save some time, I've already set it to host only. So this is basically traffic analysis without the packet inspection. We just see our two hosts. In this case, dot .10 is highlighted in orange, whereas dot .20 is highlighted in red. And we can see that dot .20 is responsible for roughly 67 or two thirds of the traffic, whereas dot .10 is responsible for one third of the traffic. If I expand these hosts, we just get traffic type other. For some reason, we also get that SSL TLS in here, but this is basically all the information we have. On host.10, I am watching youtube.com. I'm streaming one of my own videos here. So that is that type of traffic that is being generated by dot .10. But I do not really see youtube.com in here. I do not see any other protocols. On my virtual machine, which is dot .20, I'm actually streaming a video on vimeo.com but I do not really see that in here either. I just see which host is responsible for which amount of traffic. And that's all that I'm going to see here. So I've also quickly connected to the command line because I want to show you something. If I go into configuration mode and I do show system traffic analysis, we basically get two commands here. So we have to set DPI disable and the set export enable. So the export enable, the name here is very confusing. It does not mean export from the edge router to another device in order to analyze the data and store it for long term usage. What this basically means that we want to export the data from the edge router underlying shell to the GUI. That is basically the export here. 
So this is basically host only mode. If we also enable DPI, then we are using the traffic analysis feature with the deep packet inspection and we can actually see the application. So that's why I wanted to show you this part because the naming is very confusing. We cannot export this data. Again, if you want to do that, you want to run something like SNMP. So let's go back to the GUI and I've already set the operational status to be enabled instead of host only. So I've done that in the background, but it is very easy to do. So we can see I still have my two hosts in here, dot .10 and .20. The main difference is here, if I expand this, that I actually see these top apps. And you can see YouTube for 1.21.1.10 and you can see Vimeo for .20. You also get that QUIC, which is basically the protocol that is being used to stream the data to my browser. So that's the video and the audio and the actual YouTube.com category in this case is when we select the page hit. So when we actually go to the page or go navigate to another video, the actual streaming part is done by the QUIC protocol. And the same is true for Vimeo. So about these categories, you can see it as I hover over here, you can see we have a built-in category streaming media, and this is a built-in category for web. So I can actually combine these categories into a new category. So let's say uh, I want to select a new category. So let's say I'm just calling it streaming for Vimeo and I'm going to do the same for YouTube. I can also select my other category here. So I do not need to create it twice. And then on the left here, my screen is a little bit too small for this. So let me move this up. So you can see that I now have a new category called streaming, which holds Vimeo and YouTube. So if I go back here, you can see that this category is not actually shown in here. It is not in my top apps because I still get these separate apps. I still get separately YouTube and Vimeo. They're not combined together into a same uh, category. So that is not what this feature is for. This might seem very confusing at first, but these categories do have a purpose. The main purpose is using them in firewall rules. So I have a completely different video that focuses on this, but very briefly, if I go to firewall NAT, firewall policies, let's like when in, for example, and I go to configuration or rules, I should say, and then actions advanced in here, I can select my application. So I can actually create a firewall rule based on my streaming video. And then I can say, I want to drop this. So that is something we can use for content filtering. You can actually use the traffic analysis feature categories in order to drop those in the firewalls. And you can see we have some basic categories in here already. So that's what this whole feature is for the categories. It is not for actual viewing of traffic. It is more for use later on with firewall rules. And like I said, I have a separate video that focuses on that. The last thing that I want to talk about is how this traffic analysis feature actually works. In my opinion, I believe that it is intertwined with the firewall feature because we also have those categories. That means that this is only applicable when the traffic is actually going through the firewall, in this case from the LAN to the WAN. So this traffic analysis feature won't actually capture or show traffic that is going from my host to my other host, so uh, between these hosts. So let's actually prove that. Let me open up my virtual machine here. Let me also open up my Explorer. And my virtual machine, like I said, is at dot .20. If I go to my Explorer here, I have already shared a folder called share. So let's say I wanna copy this test.iso. I wanna copy that to that folder. So I can go to one to one one dot twenty slash share. And let's actually paste that in here. So you can see I'm transferring roughly 700 Mbps or 700 MB, I should say. So I should see that in this traffic here. I should see that in the traffic analysis feature, but it doesn't actually show up. So 600 MB is uh, quite a bit to show up. It will actually drown out this YouTube and all of the other traffic, but I'm not seeing it in here because it is not flowing through the firewall, going from land to land. That is why it is not showing up here. So that's basically all there is to it. Traffic analysis feature and deep packet inspection. The main thing that we have to look out for that this data is purged after 30 minutes of host inactivity. We cannot export it to a different location, even though we have that export keyword in the CLI, but it applies mainly to host only mode. And the other thing is that uh, we can use those categories. But like I said, I have a separate video that focuses on that. I hope this has been informative and thank you for watching.